June 1940, Nazi-occupied Europe. After the fall of France, Vichy French authorities turn over to the German SS and police thousands of Spanish refugees, virtually all of whom fought against General Francisco Franco's rebel troops during the Spanish Civil War, and who fled to France after Franco overthrew the Spanish Republic in 1939. The SS and police incarcerate the overwhelming majority of the Spanish Republicans, more than 7,000 in Mauthausen in 1940 and 1941, and individual members of the anti-Franco forces continue to trickle into the camp until the last weeks of the war. An estimated 197,000 prisoners of virtually every German-occupied country in World War II will pass through Mauthausen concentration camp and its subcamps during the time they are operational. Living and working conditions there lead to the death by murder, mistreatment, starvation, exposure and disease of more than half of the prisoners. One of the perpetrators responsible for these atrocities is a German doctor, Eduard Krebsbach. Eduard Krebsbach was born on the 8th of August, 1894, in Bonn, then part of the German Empire. Krebsbach attended a humanistic high school in Cologne and in 1912 began studying medicine at the University of Freiburg. In 1919, he obtained his doctorate and in the same year he was one of the co-founders of the Freiburg local anti-Semitic group. In the early 1920s, Krebsbach relocated from Freiburg and served as a company and district doctor. After Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party came into power in January 1933, Krebsbach was dismissed from his position as a district doctor due to suspicions of opposing Nazism. However, he opened a medical practice in Freiburg later that year and also served as a contract doctor for the local police department. In the same year, Krebsbach joined the Nazi party and the SS, becoming a member of the medical squadron in Freiburg. On the 9th and 10th of November, 1938, the Nazi leaders unleashed a series of coordinated violent riots against the Jews throughout Nazi Germany and recently incorporated territories. The Nazi SA and German civilians not only ransacked 7,500 Jewish-owned businesses, homes and schools, but also destroyed hundreds of synagogues. Furthermore, Jewish cemeteries were desecrated and tens of thousands of Jewish men were rounded up and sent to concentration camps. This event came to be known as Kristallnacht, or the Night of Broken Glass, because of the shattered glass that littered the streets afterwards. In addition to the physical violence, the Nazi regime imposed severe financial penalties on the Jewish community. They held the Jews collectively responsible for the damages inflicted during Kristallnacht, and used this as an opportunity to confiscate Jewish property and businesses. Grebsbach, a fanatical anti-Semite, could finally express his hatred towards Jews when during Kristallnacht, together with several other SA and SS members, set fire to the local synagogue in Freiburg. In the autumn of 1941, Krebsbach became a garrison doctor of Mauthausen concentration camp, tasked with supervising medical care and all medical personnel of the camp. Mauthausen concentration camp had become operational from the 8th of August, 1938, several months after the German annexation of Austria, when the SS transferred the first prisoners from the Dachau concentration camp. The site was chosen because of the nearby granite quarry and its proximity to Linz. During this phase, the prisoners, all of them German and Austrian men, had to build their own camp and work in the quarry. In December 1939, the SS ordered the construction of a second concentration camp, Gusen, just a few kilometers from Mauthausen. The Gusen camp went into operation in May 1940. The Second World War began on the 1st of September 1939 when Nazi Germany invaded Poland. Three months into World War II in December 1939, the number had increased to over 2,600 prisoners, primarily convicted criminals, asocials, political opponents, and religious conscientious objectors such as Jehovah's Witnesses. During the war, the SS also incarcerated more than 10,000 Soviet prisoners of war at Mauthausen, including 3,000 held at the Mauthausen subcamp Gusen. Nationals of virtually every German-occupied country in World War II came through Mauthausen. These included, among those prisoners who were registered, more than 37,000 non-Jewish Poles, nearly 23,000 Soviet civilians, as well as members of the international brigades, most of them communists of various nationalities who had fought the Franco forces in Spain. Among the Spanish prisoners was Francisco Borch, a photographer and veteran of the Spanish Civil War, who was imprisoned at the camp for four years. During his time working in the photography lab of the camp, 
he was able to hide and preserve until liberation about 2,000 negatives taken by the SS head of the department, Paul Riken, as well as by himself. These photos depicted the conditions in which the prisoners lived and were murdered in the camp, and they were also proof that the camp was known and visited by high leaders of the Third Reich, such as Ernst Kaltenbrunner or August Eigruber, who appeared visiting both Mauthausen camp proper and the quarry adjacent to the camp. Following the start of World War II, the number of prisoners arriving in Mauthausen increased dramatically. Mauthausen and Gusen were the concentration camps with the harshest imprisonment conditions and the highest mortality. Those who were ill or deemed useless by the SS lived in constant fear for their lives. Living and working conditions in both camps led to the death by murder, mistreatment, starvation, exposure and disease of more than half of the prisoners. In addition, German doctors subjected Mauthausen prisoners to pseudoscientific medical experiments, including testing levels of testosterone, experimenting with delousing chemicals, medicines for tuberculosis, and nutrition experiments. Camp physician Hermann Richter surgically removed significant organs, for example stomach, liver, or kidneys, from living prisoners solely in order to determine how long prisoners could survive without the organ in question. The Austrian Dr. Aribert Heim, also known as Dr. Death and Butcher of Mauthausen, not only conducted gruesome experiments, such as injecting various solutions into the hearts of Jewish prisoners to see which killed them fastest, but he was also known for performing operations without anesthesia. In the camp, Eduard Krebsbach was responsible for initiating the practice of mass execution of prisoners that he and other doctors judged unworthy to live or unable to work. This was performed with lethal injections of phenol directly into the heart. In this way, he killed or supervised the murder of at least 900 Russian, Polish and Czech prisoners, for which he earned the nickname among the inmates of Dr. Spritzbach or Dr. Injection. There were cases when through his carelessness, prisoners declared dead came back to life in the call room of the crematorium. Those who awakened were then shot in the neck by a guard. After the war, Josef Herzler, a former Mauthausen inmate, recalled how cruel and sadistic Krebsbach had behaved towards the prisoners. Krebsbach sometimes came to a block and had the Jews paraded before him. He then asked if any of them were doctors, and if they were, he would say, You Jewish pig, you're just an abortionist. The next day, they were done away with by the kapos. If a Jewish inmate was lying on the floor with a broken limb, a not uncommon occurrence at work, he was usually thrown over a wall by a kapo. If Dr. Krebsbach was passing, he would say ironically, yes, this broken foot is a hopeless case. In 1941, the SS started to construct a gas chamber and other installations at Mauthausen for the systematic murder of large groups of people, and Krebsbach himself was responsible for its construction. Like some other concentration camps, Mauthausen was equipped with a stationary gas chamber with a capacity to kill up to 80 people at a time by means of Zyklon B gas, and the operations of asphyxiation lasted approximately 30 minutes. The entire procedure for every group of victims consisted of transport to the gas chamber, undressing, killing and transporting of the bodies to the crematory ovens, and took about two to three hours. It is believed that the first to be killed were 231 Soviet war prisoners on the 9th of May, 1942. Mauthausen's gas chamber remained operative until the very last days of the war. Grebsbach used to come to the Mauthausen hospital and wrote down the numbers of the weakest and very ill prisoners. He always declared that the dangerously ill prisoners would be sent to Dachau. Since Dachau concentration camp was considered to be a better camp, prisoners were glad to be able to go there. However, these men were not sent to Dachau. Instead, they received gasoline injections into the heart or were gassed. Krebsbach was a sadist whose greatest pleasure, together with other doctors, was to watch the suffering of their victims in the gas chamber. Through a small window, they would watch as the Zyklon B gas caused his victims excruciating pain, violent convulsions, and finally, a heart attack. At the end of 1942, in Krebsbach's presence, 120 to 130 Czechs were gassed because of their involvement in the assassination attempt of Reinhard Heydrich, the deputy Reich protector of the Protectorate of Bohemia and Moravia, which was the part of Czechoslovakia incorporated into the German Reich on the 15th of March, 1939. The career of Eduard Krebsbach at Mauthausen Gusen ended on the 22nd of May, 1943, when he shot Josef Breitenfellner, a young man from a nearby village who served in the German army and at that time was home for vacation. 
Grebsbach shot this German soldier because he was disturbed by Breitenfellner and his friends when they awoke Grebsbach from his sleep. Due to this crime, Krebsbach was transferred to the Kaiserwald concentration camp in Latvia and stayed there until the camp's closure in August 1944. In the spring of the same year, he was involved in the so-called Children's Action, in which all children under the age of 14 were singled out and murdered. While at Kaiserwald, Krebsbach conducted selections of camp inmates for execution by forcing the prisoners to perform physical exercises to determine their strength and then identifying the 2,000 weakest to be killed. On the 28th of July, 1944, the so-called Krebsbach action took place during which Krebsbach had the prisoners line up in columns and the men and women were ordered to run back and forth in front of the SS personnel. Those who did not run fast enough were singled out. 1,000 prisoners, mostly old and weak, were murdered that day. Following the camp's closure, Krebsbach resumed a career as an epidemic inspector for Latvia, Estonia and Lithuania and was then transferred to the regular army as a senior staff doctor. At the end of 1944, he left the army and worked once again as a company doctor in a spinning mill in Kassel, Germany. On the 5th of May, 1945, the 11th Armored Division of the United States Army, led by General George S. Patton, reached Gusen and Mauthausen. The sight that awaited them was one of immense suffering, as they discovered thousands of emaciated and exhausted prisoners who had been subjected to horrific treatment. After the liberation, some prisoners were in such a weakened state that many still died in the days and weeks that followed the liberation. Though by the time of its liberation, most of the guards in Mauthausen had fled, around 30 of those who remained were brutally killed by the prisoners. A similar number were also killed in Gusen. Those SS guards who were not killed were forced to break stones in the quarry, thus finding themselves under the direction of the prisoners they had once mistreated. The former SS guards were also submitted to punitive physical exercises, such as calisthenics or crawling on the ground. While survivors and American soldiers were watching, the former SS guards had to perform the same exercises to which they had been submitting the prisoners for years. An estimated 197,000 prisoners passed through Mauthausen concentration camp and its subcamps between August 1938 and May 1945. At least 95,000 died there more than 14,000 of them Jewish. Justice finally caught up with Krebsbach, when following the end of the war, he was arrested and then tried at the mauthausen gusen camp trials heard by an American military government court at Dachau. The first trial of personnel from mauthausen gusen began on the 29th of March, 1946. During the trial, Krebsbach confirmed that he had killed people unable to work or incurably sick and added that he had carried out his work to the best of his knowledge and belief. When a prosecutor asked him if it had ever occurred to him that these were human beings, people who had the misfortune to be inmates or who had been neglected, he replied, no, people are like animals. Animals that are born deformed or incapable of living are put down at birth. This should be done for humanitarian reasons with people as well. This would prevent a lot of misery and unhappiness. On the 13th of May, 1946, the American military government court at Dachau sentenced Eduard Krebsbach to death by hanging. Krebsbach remained an ardent Nazi until his very end. When asked if it never occurred to him what he was doing was a crime, he replied, No, I carried out my work to the best of my knowledge and belief because I had to. Krebsbach was 52 years old when he was executed by hanging on the 28th of May, 1947. There were no tears shed for Eduard Krebsbach. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.